Good afternoon, YouTube. Welcome to Fairface Fail Productions. So today we're out at China Wall near Lake George, Colorado. And we're kind of riding some of the trails out here, which are pretty awesome. I haven't been out in this area in probably close to 10 years. So it's awesome to get out here again. Now today we're going to be kind of talking about a little of uh, Riehu, who they are, and why it's a two-stroke you should definitely be looking at if you're in the market for buying a higher-end uh, two-stroke for hard enduro. So who is Riehu? Well, Riehu is a company that is Spanish-based, and really they've been around since the 1940s. I believe they came about in 1945, and they've made a lot of mopeds and smaller two-stroke motorcycles in, um, well, they sell or export about 12,000 bikes a year. Um, we just don't ever see them in the United States. In 2019, KTM acquired about 60% of gas gas. Now, Gas Gas was a pretty awesome company that uh, made a Spanish Enduro two-stroke, and they had some other four-stroke lines earlier on. When KTM bought them, they really only wanted the trials bike technology, electric bike technology, and the name Gas Gas. They really had no interest in the Enduro platform that uh, already existed under the company. Which is really pretty sad when you think about it, because it was an awesome and unique bike on a very unique engine. I think this is really disappointing, especially for the fans that really loved the Gas Gas platform. I was first introduced to the Gas Gas in about, probably about 10 years ago now. Um, Mark Odette with Meeker Extreme, he had a 2012 model that was really quite awesome. It was a very uni unique bike to see, and uh, it was a very exciting bike too. It looked cool. Um, it might have been a little bit heavier, I think, at the time period was the biggest complaint. But um, they, they really were something different to the market compared to everything else you always see. Now that KTM has acquired them, they are in name only. The Gas Gas name now is pretty much only a rebranded KTM. It's the same frame, platform, engine. In fact, it's more of your budget line of parts where Gas Gas had always tried to be a premium Enduro bike. Now they are essentially the entry level into KTM. Now, Gas Gas was always a smaller company, and their sales figures were nowhere near that of KTM or the other big brands. But they brought something different to the market, and they also had something that was unique. And I think that's important for us to, to remember these days, is we're losing a lot of our unique bikes, as KTM has bought up a lot of companies. They make fantastic bikes, there's really no denying that. But at the cost of $13,000 for a Husqvarna these yeah. days... It's not that these bikes aren't necessarily worth that kind of money, it's more that we're losing our uniqueness of various different uh, motorcycles that we can buy. Now going back to the acquisition of KTM buying Gas Gas, well what they left behind, Riehu picked up. Uh, Riehu acquired all of the rights and manufacturing capabilities to build the previous Gas Gas model from 2019. Riehu is now the real Spanish Enduro, and that's pretty cool, and I'm very glad that they picked it up. I think this gave them an opportunity to get into, so to speak, the big leagues when it comes to a full-sized 300cc style bike that has a really great track record, and it's been a proven platform over the years. Yeah! Gas Gas had revamped the platform in 2018, but because of falling sales as well as a lot of other issues that they had with manufacturing at the time period, getting supplies, exporting, so on and so forth, and then rolling into COVID, um, that really hurt nice. Gas Gas quite badly. Truthfully, the 2018 and 19 models really never made it uh, to the U.S. market in any Almost. extremely large quantities even comparative to their previous sales in the United States. Many of you might be thinking, well, if that's a 2019 model that's just been picked up by Riehu and is being rebranded and sold now, um, is an old platform even that good? Is it worth buying? Is it even competitive with the other bikes like KTM, Husky, and let's just even say Beta? 
The answer is an absolute yes. At $10,000, around that price point, depending if you're buying a Ranger model, an MR Pro, or the Racing, you really get a lot for your money. You're talking full KYB suspensions, all the way up to the DLC coded and in, on the MR, MR Pro. You're getting top quality parts, you're getting a motor that's been proven over decades, you're getting a dirt bike that is competitive in the current market while costing a little bit less money and they have fantastic support in the United States. While there's not a whole lot of dealers all over the place, CPD Direct, who imports these from Spain, they carry all the parts for Riehu now, and they carry pretty much everything Legacy Gas Gas as well. That means when you're looking for parts or anything like that, you shouldn't have any issues finding what you need very quickly. In fact, working with Mark Berg at CPD Direct has been fantastic. Now let's talk about some of the shortcomings of the Gas Gas platform as well as Riehu now. I think the biggest downside at this point is, is that the engine is a little bit older platform which means it sits on an older style starting system. I think the biggest complaint that everybody has had over the years is that the starting system on these bikes has not always been the most robust. Now Riehu has updated the entire starting system with a better motor, with uh, a totally different spindex, and some other things that have made it more reliable. And so far in my experience, uh, it's been very good. Only time will tell how reliable they are, but from what I've seen, they are doing quite well. Another possible negative is, is that this motor is not counterbalanced. Now, once upon a time, Gas Gas had actually had this motor counterbalanced, and it wasn't very popular in that configuration, so they took the counterbalancer out. Uh, funny enough, um, now that they don't have it in there, I actually don't mind it. The motor does not vibrate, it isn't violent in any sort of way. In fact, while I'm riding, it, it doesn't feel any different than pretty much any two-stroke I've been on to include the TPI bikes as well as the Betas. Another possible downside people always like to talk about is weight. I weighed the bike in at 256 pounds. That isn't very heavy and in comparison to the other bikes, it's really truthfully within a few pounds of the KTMs and the Betas. By the time you put on protection like pipe guards as well as skid plates and other things, the weight really doesn't seem to matter much between the bikes. I've seen betas way more with different things on them, so it's, uh, I think we dive too much into weight a lot of times. It's very competitive within its class. Now some of my biggest pros about this bike at this point in time, I think the first thing that really comes to mind is how unique the motor feels. The Riehu or Gas Gas engine is, it is raw, powerful, and very linear with an extremely torquey body amend when it's tuned properly. I think out of all the two strokes that I've ridden at this point, it feels pretty much the most versatile when it comes to uh, mid-range power and down low torque. You get a lot of both and it's not the best at either necessarily, but it really, really combines a lot of fun factor. You put that with a platform that is so planted and a very well sprung KYB suspension, the bike just just wants to go. It always tracks, it it's, feels very light while you're riding it. It really seems like all the parts, the engine and platform frame, it all meshes together. And that's the biggest pro and strength that I have found with riding this bike so far. The character and liveliness of the Riehu is just is just unique and when you take the bike out people want to know what it is and people are very interested it's different looking as well it's a very stunning looking bike from the way the graphics are done to the high quality plastics and the different shape to the frame it's something that you look at and you instantly know that it's not a KTM or a Beta or any of the other brands out there the Riehu comes with a nice 2.6 gallon gas tank, which is very handy. I like that size because it starts to bring you into actually having really good range on the bike. And a lot it seems like a lot of bikes these days like to stick right around that like sub 2 gallon mark and that's not good enough for me. I feel like at 2.6 gallons, that's actually um, good enough for me to ride a, a lot of my longer hard enduro oh, days without worrying about running out of gas. And also, IMS does make a 3-gallon tank, or I think it's a 2.93 or something like that, but uh, pretty much a 3-gallon tank, so that's great aftermarket support, along with CPD Direct has everything you can think of as far as uh, aftermarket parts. In fact, I'm quite impressed with the aftermarket parts of this bike. 
And really that's the advantage of this bike kind of existing since 2019, is, is there's a lot out there for it. They also come very well set up from the factory. You get a nice skid plate with the MR Pro. Uh, you also get uh, decent enough tires to actually ride them through from the from the get-go. Get really good premium wheels. Also comes with your usual kind of flag style hand guards. It's a nice touch. I'm not a huge fan of them. I usually put full wraps on, but it's not bad. They also come with uh, side case protection, poly sport guards on the sides of the engine. That's a really great touch, especially at the price. I feel like, you know, once you pay twelve, thirteen thousand dollars for a KTM, then you're looking at buying all that stuff anyway. As we seem to lose more and more of our unique brands, and a lot of them fade into smaller and smaller companies that can't seem to support themselves on their sales, and then get bought by these large mega brands, I think it's time to start looking a little bit more at unique things and supporting small companies. As we lose the small companies, we kind of lose some uniqueness and the companies that want to try to do something different than the mainstream. And they really do bring something awesome. I, every time I go out and ride, it's nothing but KTMs a lot of times and, and Huskies and so on and so forth. And uh, I, get to, I get to wondering, you know, what else is out there? And as more and more of that disappears, I think, uh, I think we lose a part of the, the riding community too. We lose something that, um, both separates us and brings us together and makes us interested in the sport more and more. I know I love having options of maybe a different type of engine or something more raw or something that maybe has more torque or there's any number of things and how we ride that we look for something specific. And of course the TPI engine across three platforms um, just isn't it for me. Well guys, thanks for watching. Always appreciate it. Please like and subscribe and follow us on our journey with our various different rentals we have. But we'll catch you on the next one. Ferret Face out.